Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. This is the special Y Combinator event in Latin America together with Platzi. Right now, I'm joined by Tamana Kemani from Y Combinator, Jared Friedman from Y Combinator, and Christian Vanderhens, who incidentally also went through Life Combinator, but he's my co-founder. All right, so what is YC? It's real simple. Um, for any of you who someday start your own company, you can apply to YC. We will invest a small amount of money in return for equity in the company. And then the companies that we invest in go through a three-month program where they learn a lot about how to run a successful startup. That is YC. It's as simple as that. Um, so here are some stats about YC. YC now funds more companies than any investor of any kind anywhere in the world. We funded over 2,500 companies. Together, they're worth more than $150 billion, which is kind of a crazy number. 20 of them are worth more than a billion. And almost half of the companies that we fund now are from outside of the US. These are some of the companies that have gone through YC that you've probably heard of. Uh, Airbnb, Stripe, Reddit, Coinbase, Twitch, GitLab, these are all YC companies. And these are some of the companies that have gone through YC from Latin America that you probably heard of as well. Um, does anybody know what the first YC company from Latin America is? Put it in the chat if you know the answer. They're saying, wow, Stripe, Airbnb is in there. And now people are starting to say, Platzi, Platzi, of course. <laughs> Whoever guessed Platzi was right. Platzi was the one. They were the one that started the whole trend of YC investing in companies in Latin America. Uh, that was, are you guys uh, winter 2015? Yes, we were winter 2015. Winter 2015. So YC runs two batches a year, a summer batch and a winter batch. So Platzi was in the winter batch of 2015. And that was the start of a huge thing because after we funded Platzi, Platzi started referring their friends who were also start starting companies in Latin America and we funded them too. So I'm sure everybody here has heard of Rappi. Does anybody know how Rappi found out about YC? It's because the Plotzi founders told them to apply to YC. That's how Rappi ended up in YC. That's the only way that it would ever have happened. So thank you, Plotzi founders, for that recommendation. Uh, we have not forgotten. It in is fact, our authentic pleasure. <laughs> in fact, I think Freddie and Christian are still two of the top alumni refers of companies to YC of anyone in the world. So um, after the US now, actually, um, YC funds more companies from Latin America than any other region in the world. And that is in very large part due to Platzi and due to them starting this whole trend of companies from Latin America, coming to YC, learning how to run a startup in Silicon Valley, and then taking what they learned back home. Um, here are some of the sort of like well-known reasons why founders do YC. Um, the first one is that it's a, it's an open application. So unlike other investors, you don't need to know somebody to get into YC. Um, you can get a recommendation from an alumni, but you definitely don't need one. You just go to a website and you apply. It's as simple as that. It's like applying to, uh, to college. Um, another well-known advantage is that you is that particularly for international companies, YC is the gateway to Silicon Valley investors. Once you do YC, it opens up the entire world of all the, all the best investors in Silicon Valley um, are a lot more interested in investing in your company. And finally, um, in the startup world, the YC brand has become something that opens a lot of doors in a lot of places. 
Here are some of the secret advantages. These are reasons to do YC that most people don't actually know about. Um, so the first one is, um, particularly if you're a B2B company, YC is really helpful at getting you initial customers. For many of the most successful companies in YC, like Stripe, all of their early customers were other YC companies. Um, the second is the alumni network. So there are now more than 5,000 founders who have gone through YC, and it is hands down the most powerful network in the tech industry. And once you become a YC founder, you get access to that network. And founders often tell us that they did YC because they thought it would help with investors. And actually what turned out to be the most valuable thing was all the alumni who helped them with all kinds of things. Um, and then finally, um, a lot of people think about YC as a three month program, but actually YC lasts forever. Like here, here Plotsy is doing a talk with YC five years after they went through the program. YC does not end at the end of the three months. YC just continues for the lifetime of your startup. Okay, I got a couple more things to talk about. First thing I wanna talk about is that YC went remote. So um, the way YC used to work was it was a three month program in Silicon Valley. So when the Platzi founders went through, they actually moved to Silicon Valley for three months. Did you guys spend all three months in the Valley or did you fly back and forth? Uh, Christian ended up moving to Silicon Valley. Uh, I, I lived for the three months and then afterwards I started doing back and forth. And the only thing that stopped my back and forth was the pandemic. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. But I, one of the biggest recommendations is depending on your team. Some people will go back and bounce from their countries in, in a normal environment. Others just will uh, remain there and others just will do the program. That's when it wasn't really remote. But I'm super happy to see that now it's totally remote. Mostly for people thinking that they need a visa or something to go to the U.S. and do the program. Not required anymore. You can, you can hang out with these people remotely and Zoom like you're doing with us today. Exactly. So... Uh, in March, YC went fully remote. The summer 20 batch was the first completely remote batch. The entire batch happened over Zoom and Slack. We invested a lot in making it a fantastic remote experience. We built a whole bunch of custom software, custom integrations into Zoom and Slack, and um, it worked extremely well. Um, we just finished doing the demo day for the summer 20 batch, which is the big fundraising event where all the companies raise money. And it used to be a huge in-person event where we'd have 2000 investors come to this giant conference hall. And for the summer 20 batch, we put the whole thing online. And we thought maybe if we did a good job, it might work as well as the in-person event. And we outdid ourselves because it actually broke all the records of the in-person event. It worked much better than any in-person event ever has. So I'm really happy with how, how that went. And the, the next batch that's coming up, the winter 21 batch is going to be remote as well. And that's especially helpful, of course, for international companies. Um, cool. I want to talk about a few common misconceptions about doing YC. Uh, the first one is that it's only for US companies or US founders or that you need a visa or you have to travel here. Not true anymore. Um, we're extremely interested in getting more companies from Latin America in particular, where we've had so much success. So we're here doing this talk because we want to fund more companies. Um, the second biggest misconception is that founders are too early for YC. They see these YC companies like Rappi or, uh, and they're like, whoa, like, uh, like my company is nothing like that. I'm just like, like, I'm like, just starting out, I'm too early to apply to YC. But actually, YC funds a lot of companies extremely early. YC will fund companies that have not launched a product, that don't have any users, that don't have any revenue, and that haven't raised any money from any other investor. We, The majority of the companies that YC funds are at that stage. Um, another thing that I often hear is like, my company is too late for YC. Um, I've already raised some money from investors or I already have some revenue, like YC is only for the early companies. That's actually also not true. When Rappi went through YC, they had over a hundred employees and hundreds of delivery people already. They had sort of, sort of a huge operation already live in Colombia. And I, I think this is like a really confusing thing for founders, which is why I want to mention it, which is that YC funds companies at very different stages 
every batch for the same batch. So like in, 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 uh, in, at, at a YC dinner right next to Rappi, which had this like huge on the ground operation in Bogota, we would have a company that was like just starting out and didn't have any users. Um, and the last really common misconception we hear is that YC only funds certain kinds of companies. So like I, I often hear this from founders, they're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a B2B company. YC is only for consumer companies or uh, I'm a single founder. YC doesn't fund single founders or uh, YC only funds like programmers or why is, there there's like a hundred versions of this I've heard. It's actually very difficult to find any kind of company that YC definitely won't fund. In the last batch, we had a company that makes socks for people in India. Has the company. They're an Indian sock company. So no matter what kind of company you have, it's not going to be weirder than the Indian sock company. Um, got two more points for you. So uh, if you're not sure if you're ready to do YC, if you're just starting out with like, maybe you think you want to do a startup, but you're not really sure if doing your own startup is the right thing to you. Um, a great place to decide is startup school. Startup school is like a lightweight version of YC that happens all online. Um, it's completely free. Unlike YC, there's no admissions process. So everyone in the world can go to startup school, you just like sign up and we have tons of great resources in how to start a company. Um, and it's extremely international. The vast majority of startup school companies are international. So if you're, if you're not sure about starting a startup, if you don't have an idea for a startup, if you have an idea, but you're not sure it's a good idea, you're just sort of like experimenting, startup school is the place to go. Um, and if you think that you might wanna work at a YC company, we have a website that we built called workatastartup.com. This is run by YC, and it is a great way to get a job at a YC company. Um, you just fill out a profile and YC companies will send you a message. And of course, I should mention that Plotsy is also hiring. That's all I got. Now I'm gonna hand it over to the Plotsy founders to talk about the story of Plotsy. All right, thank you very much, Jared. That was that was that was great. And I think there are many common misconceptions about Y Combinator that we hear all the time. For those of you that don't know, if you don't speak Sp well, if you don't speak English, you cannot understand me right now. Uh, so I'm going to say it I'm going to say it first in English and then I'm going to say it in Spanish. Platzi has a version of startup school in Spanish so that you can start learning how to create your own company. Some YC startups started with our version of startup school. For example, travel.ai or Mipos from Ecuador. Uh, so that's one way to start, but you should definitely apply to startup school because Y Combinator first has more money than us. And second, they have this system of study groups that it's impressive and it's very valuable. Now I'm going to say it in Spanish. Platzi tiene la versión de startup school en español. Es el taller de startups de Platzi en platzi.com slash startups. Las esta hay varias startups que han entrado a Y Combinator como Travel.ai o Mi Post, entre muchas otras, que empezaron y crearon su estructura legal y su compañía usando el taller de startups de Platzi. Así que ese es un gran lugar para empezar. Pero ahora, and now, I will love to, I will love to pass the word to Christian because the, the issue about being first is that you make all the mistakes so that the people in the future don't. <laughs> and since we were the first, I want to I want I want Christian to explain because it was Christian, the guy that persuaded me to apply to Y Combinator. Why did you want to apply to YC Christian back in 2014? Uh well, first, uh I believe that applying to YC was a combination of luck and perseverance in a in a sense that. We knew about YC because of Hacker News. They had this great community and we love community. So of course we knew about Reddit and we knew about Hacker News and we're like, oh, communities and they're together. And we knew about Paul Graham and we knew about Alexis Ophanian and these community builders. And I believe that they were part of our role models. So uh, I was following Hacker News and I remember in 2013, by the end of 2013, uh, I was browsing Hacker News and there was a small banner an orange banner that said, apply to YC. Today is the last day for the next batch. And then there was a post that had a lot of votes. So it was on the, in the cover of Hacker News. And it said, I will help you to apply to YC in 30 minutes. And I was like, oh, I got 30 minutes. And today is the application. So I just went and I filled the form. 
First lesson for YC and first lesson for communication in general in English, be brief. Go to the point. Don't just tell your whole story. So I had 30 minutes and I just I just shared, I just uh, started filling the, the form. At the end, it asked me for a video. And here's the hack that I did. I didn't have a video with Freddie and I only had 30 minutes and the application was over. And Freddie had just gone to San Francisco for an event at Google I.O. where he talked the story of Platzi in English. So I just took that YouTube video, posted there, published, and then sent an email to Freddie. And I was like, hey, dude, I just applied for YC. And he was like, oh, okay. That, Man, that I'm, sure, I'm sure that's not going to fly. That's not going to fly for Y Combinators 2020. Do a good video. You don't have to do a fancy video. You can do it with yes. your webcam. But from, from, from our experience uh, ranking applications, the video is really important. Is that right, Jared? Absolutely. It is very. No, actually, I have to, I have to say that the, the, the end of the story. We got an interview. We met Paul Graham, but we didn't get into YC. So Platzi applied in 2014. But I first of all, I realized it's like, hey, This guy from Guatemala with this guy from can apply to YC and can get 10 minutes to meet the partners to apply for the program. So that was very powerful for me. And also, I got an email that said, sorry, we won't uh, invest in your company. So I felt disappointed. But as a founder, you're always going to have a lot of rejection. It's part of the story. So the next year, when there was the applications coming, I told Freddie, we should do it again. And this time, we did it together. We analyzed the form. We did our video. We did everything, everything correctly. We went to the interview and we got in. So you know what I remember from that video, Christian? Yeah. You were in Chile, and I was yeah. in Germany on on holiday with with like my my girlfriend back then, who's now my wife. And you told me we need to make the video. Remember the video? We we can't just send you a, a random talk anymore. We have to do a legit video. So you remember that we, we kind of made the basic bullet points and then I send you uh, half of the video and you got the other half of the video and you put it together on iMovie. That's, we, we really hacked that video together really fast, but it worked. It worked. It got us an interview and then eventually we got in. Uh, and it was pretty, pretty cool. All of a sudden, uh, Paul Buchheit, who started uh, Gmail, and who is a great partner and, and, and a great friend and investor now, uh, he called us and said, hi, I want to invest in your company. And guys, for everyone who's, who's, who's watching this from Latin America, speaking about life-changing calls, that call. When Paul Graham called me and was like, Christian, I want to invest in your company. Trust me, I'm super happy about what we're building in Platzi, but that was one key moment on our story. I, I, I want to tell the other side of the story. We went to Mountain View. We made, we did the interview. We were scared, like you cannot imagine, super nervous. And this is extremely normal. You are all nervous when you're doing that. And then we went to Palo Alto to a random bakery in Palo Alto. And I, and I, and I was seeing Christian walking from one side to the other, checking if his phone had battery in case they, because <laughs> if you get in, you get a call. If you don't get in, you get an email. So he was like, no, 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 my phone, my phone is too charged. Like, does it work? Freddy, call me, call me. Okay, it works. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> we, we, we were a mess. Christian more than me. But, and, and this is fascinating because Christian, it's a cold hearted machine. I've seen Christian, I, I think that Christian can do an open heart surgery. But back then, Christian was like, oh my God, oh my God. So when Paul Buhait calls us, we knew that our life was going to change. We just didn't know how. Because something that Jared said a minute ago, it's extremely true. You can consider Y Combinator the gateway to Silicon Valley. There are many ways to get to, and, and Silicon Valley is not like super special magical place. Silicon Valley is like a small town trapped in the 60s and the 70s, but incidentally, they have the most amount of money anywhere in the world for technology. Like if you, if, if you see Jared right there in the screen, Most, probably 80, 90% of the big liquidity events in technology happen in a 30 kilometer radius around Jared. That's, that's just the reality of, the, of Silicon Valley. That's the power of it. But if you just go there, like if you take a flight and do a tour of Silicon Valley, one of these things, you're going to get nothing. Because Silicon Valley at the end of the day is the people that you know and the connections that you make. And in, in certain ways, the gateways that you go through. 
Y Combinator is probably the most powerful gateway. It's, a, it's like a seal of approval that guarantees that what you're doing is not bullshit, that there is something valuable, valuable and beautiful behind your company. And, and I didn't understand it at the moment. I understood it at demo day. Like for the next three months, Christian and I worked like never before. For, from, from January to March 2015, I have worked the hardest that I ever had in, well, now I have worked harder uh, because the, the, the company has had a history. But by then, I, I just didn't understand what working hard meant. That's, that's the other part of, of the magic behind Y Combinator. Y Combinator surrounds you with amazing people that makes you want to believe that you can be like them. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy for us to basically try to, like try to work towards the goals that we can see, but you don't know what you don't know. When we went to Y Combinator, one of the magical things that I got was, and I, I know how this is gonna sound, but I basically found out that science fiction was real. My, my batchmates were curing cancer, sending rockets to space. They were analyzing in a nanometric level the structure of the brain. They were, they were oh, Jesus, this, it was, and I was just, oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing some courses in <laughs> Spanish. It, it felt, do you remember that feeling of science? I, I still have that feeling every demo day. Every, every demo day, something important about YC is uh, you go there and someone's building something incredible or is pitching a story that you couldn't believe. So I would say that YC is her biggest connection to the future, definitely. Just the, the community, the, the investment, the founders, and they push you harder. That's the best part. At the end, you build a community. Starting a startup, it's going to be an, an event in your life that it's going to be super lonely and super hard. So you better you better make, make that happen with some friends. And you can make those friends as you are building a community here in Platzi with your fellow students. You can do the same with other entrepreneurs through YC. Man, and then there's the batchmates. I am friends. Some of my best friends in life are people that I met through Y Combinator. Uh, Sid from GitLab, uh, Evan Said from Tara.ai, Anissa. Uh, Prasenjit, so many people, so and and from across batches, be, because Y Combinator eventually turns out to be like a secret society. Like you're just going through life in some random country, and you see a guy with a YC hoodie, and you're like, "Hey, what's your batch? Oh, my batch is blah blah blah. How oh, was your company?" And then you're like traveling the world with them, going to their houses, talking about deep philosophical questions. It's it's a it's a beautiful community. I think that the magic of the community uh, that Y Combinator was able to build is extremely hard to replicate. And look, Y Combinator is not unique in that regard. Uh, I think that another uh, fund that has made this very well, it's 500 startups, is just that Y Combinator has taken this to such an unbelievable level. And, and now during the pandemic, they have managed to keep this pace even in a moment where all our lives change dramatically. I was checking last demo day and there's a guy that built vegan tuna that tastes like tuna. And it's like, hey, how do you make this? With watermelon. Nah. Yeah, with like with a watermelon, you can have it. It, it tastes like tuna, but it's not tuna. And, 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 and it, again, I'm, I'm talking about all the science fiction stuff, but there's also basically software. Um, one of our students, uh, the Sebastian and Felipe, they built a customer support artificial intelligence system called travel.ai. And it runs on, on top of WhatsApp. And this is a YC company. They're doing pretty well. They're B2B. They're doing it in Latin America and they're growing pretty well. Uh, another one of our students, uh, Orlando, he built a point of sale system for stores in Latin America called Mipos. And again, they're growing a lot. They're growing super well. And obviously you have the explosive diaspora of all the companies that came out of what Simon and Sebastian built uh, together with Felipe at Rappi. It, the, the, I think that the human brain doesn't understand compound effects until you see it live. We have a good and a bad example. The bad example is the coronavirus. That's a compound effect that it's affecting us all. And now we suddenly understand what exponential means. But the good part of this is startups. How come 
something that Christian and I built in different countries with our savings without raising any money today has millions of students, 16 companies that have raised more than $1 million, dollars, seven companies that have gone through Y Combinator. And how, how does that happen in such a short amount of time? And I think that that's the magic behind what YC managed to put into you because Y Combinator is not really, it's not like a school. You don't go there to take classes or to, to talk with teachers. It's, it's more of a community of experts and par partners that have seen everything. The partners have seen truly dark stuff. So they will not be faced when you arrive like, I don't know what to do because I have this and that problem. They, they have seen everything and, and they know how to help you. And, and other founders. What, what else am I missing, Christian? I have, I actually, I actually have a question for Jared regarding that. Jared, you've seen the change of YC since it was just hosting companies that did software mostly for US-based businesses to now where 40% of your, of your alumni, of, of the companies that you guys are, are from all over the world. How has that changed YC and also using your experience as a partner? What, what kind of companies, what can you tell us about companies that impress you from Latin America and from the region? Yeah. I love the way that YC has expanded internationally. It's, it's led us to fund so many cool things, things that I would never have known were, were opportunities because it per, particularly in areas like in, like throughout uh, Latin America, there are all these amazing opportunities to build consumer businesses that don't exist in the U S because those businesses were built 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. Um, and so you have opportunities to build things like Platzi that would be very hard to start today in the U.S. because there's so much competition. But in Latin America, it's just like a blue ocean and you can really carve out like a huge space for a new company. That's pretty cool. Freddie, you, you want to go with uh, some of the questions that we had? Uh, yeah, we have we have a. Uh, uh a massive amount of questions. So I, I'm, I'm seeing here the question that got the, the most amount of hearts. Uh, one of the most hearted question is this, from Luis Carlos Sarmiento. What are the minimum conditions of a company to be able to apply to YC? And this is a question that I've seen often, like, am I too early? Am I too late? Uh, what should be the stage of my product, the stage of my sales? Like, what's the minimum? So there are only two things that you need in order to apply to YC. You need to have an idea that you're excited to work on, and you need to have a co-founding team that can build that idea, that can execute on it. Those are the only two things. A lot of people think, like Freddie was saying, that you need to have a certain amount of revenue, or you need to have launched a product, or you need other things. It's not true. We fund companies without any of those things all the time. Now, that's not to say that if you have those two things, you're guaranteed to get in. That's not the case. But like Freddie and Christian were saying, if you apply and you don't get in, you just apply again the next batch. We never hold it against founders that they applied before and they didn't get in. In fact, we consider it a good sign. We we are we look more closely at companies that have applied the past batch or two and not gotten in because we know that they didn't give up. They stuck with whatever they were working on and they've kept working on it. And if they've made some progress since they applied six months ago, that's a really strong signal for us. Uh, I have a question for you, Jared. I remember in winter 15, and I'm guessing that this is true still to this day, that you guys strongly discouraged being a solo founder. Uh, one of the one of the key things and at Y Combinator was to start with someone, start to get it, have co-founders, have at least one co-founder. That starting just one person, it's very hard. What's what's your take on that right now? Has that changed? Yeah. So That's a great question. And there, there are definitely a lot of people who think that like, oh, if I don't have a co-founder, YC won't accept me. And that's not true. YC funds lots of solo founders. About 15% of the companies that we fund are solo founders. Um, we still think that if you have someone who you know who could be a co-founder, 
that you should really think about having them join as a co-founder because startups are really hard for one person. They're very emotionally draining and having a co-founder is really helpful. But we also know that like you can't manufacture a co-founder. Like um, Christian and Freddie, how, how did you two meet each other? <laughs> Christian, normally it, it's me the one uh, telling that story. So go for it. I, I want to hear it's, your version. It's, uh, it's, it, it was pretty simple. Uh, I believe that in Latin America, we have issues actually just building teams. It's hard to find a, a co-founder. It's, it's one of our, of our biggest challenges as, as Latinos. We, we love being individually. So before Platzi, I built a community and then Freddie built its own community and we met as competitors. So the first, the first relationship we had was like, hey, my company is doing better than yours. No, mine is doing better than, than yours. So there was a, a very healthy, but still some sort of rivality in between the two of us. And at some point we decided to join forces. Uh, we actually asked other founders from other communities if they wanted to join our idea. At the end, it was Freddie and me, the ones that, that stick. Uh, but that's actually a great idea for you in Latin America. Find other people building similar things to you. You don't have to fight and you don't have to believe that you're just going to be the one person who's going to make that business uh, work. Maybe your competitor in another country, the guy from Guatemala found the guy from Colombia and took his competitor as his co-founder. And it helped us because we are very competitive against each other. So, so that's our story, and it, it was great. I don't think it will it will it will help for everyone. Others will find their co-founders at school or at work. Uh, but it's it's a process, and you have to be convinced that that founder is going to help you, and you're going to help them, and you guys really complement each other. I wanted to add something that I think. I've been thinking a lot about what's the single most important thing that co-founders should have. And, I, and it's absolute trust in each other. This is very hard to do. That's, that's the reason why I don't, I'm not sure what the, what's the take from Y Combinator, but in my humble opinion, I don't believe in these uh, like uh, co-founder dating websites or like co-founder matching these, these, these uh, systems where you try to find a co-founder for your idea. I don't believe in those because- no. Right? It, it, it has to be more organic than that. It has to be somebody who you get to know over time. It's like, uh, it's like marrying somebody, right? You don't want to marry somebody on the first date. You want to get to know them first. Being, being a co-founder, is a, it's like a marriage. My, my wife calls Christian my first marriage. So <laughs> this, this, this is a conversation that has happened before in this house. Uh, and yeah, what you need is absolute trust because... If you decide to start a startup, you are accepting the fact that unbelievable amounts of pain will go, will happen in your life. That there will be very, very, very hard moments because you're building something out of nothing. You are, you are, most startup, startups are dead ideas thriving to become a life companies. A startup isn't a company. It's a series of experiments trying to become a viable company. And you may be wrong. We were wrong. When we went through Y Combinator, we thought that life classes were the way to teach. Now that we're in the pandemic, we all know the issues that we have trying to do this Zoom stuff. And then we built a whole new system and a whole new learning methodology. And we found out through trial and error and through many and many experiments how to make this happen. It's not, it's not natural at all. It takes a lot of work and you can run out of money and you're going to have to fire people and there's going to be moments where you want to just give up. So you need to be surrounded uh, with people that you trust. That, that's that's a, like, what's the maximum amount of founders that you have seen that actually work, Jared? Yeah, exactly. Like, what's, what's the company with the most amount of founders? That that you oh. think it's it's like okay. The most founders probably this company called Magic. I think they had seven founders initially. Oh, Magic was in my batch. <laughs> yeah, was it six or seven? It, it was, was like a, seven. Was number. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember Magic, Christian? I remember Magic. They were they were a crazy story. Uh, just just a brief story for everyone who's who's, who's listening to this. Imagine a company that has to pivot um, amongst the batch 
And all of a sudden they have incredible traffic. And I remember them asking us help to the batch, like, hey, you guys have free time to come to the office this weekend and help us get some requests because we're growing like crazy and we cannot do it by ourselves. And people were helping them. It was, it was actually pretty cool. Yeah. Let's go with the next question. Um, SJ Vasconcelo is asking, what can I do to invite a YC partner to talk in my university? So thank you very much for the interest. We do talks at universities all around the world. Um, we used to fly around and give them. Obviously, we're not able to do that for this summer, but we're doing a bunch over Zoom for the fall. Um, if you're interested in that, then shoot us an email. We'll see if we can do it. That's really cool. By the way, uh, for the 6,000 or so people that are right now connected and for everybody that is going to be watching this lady in our YouTube channel, the way that you apply to Y Combinator is that you go to, something is going to appear under me, ycombinator.com slash apply. That's all you need to do. If you are one of our students, uh, we have a system in which we can take you from idea to the prototype or the product that you need so that you can apply to places like Y Combinator. That's the startup workshop of Platzi. We teach you programming, design, uh, basic UI, how to get the first users, the, the basics of how to do grow that start. And by then, if you go through Platzi's demo day, you will be ready to apply for something like YC. We have had seven companies that have gone through YC because of this. Some others have not chosen to go to YC, and that's okay. But truly, YC, YC is like the star in Super Mario Bros. Sure, you can go through the level without it, but it's just like the fastest way to make it happen. And there's one question here from Eau Kunst asking if you need a US visa to apply to Y Combinator. Back in my day, you did because you had to leave for, you didn't need residence, just like a, a tourist visa was fine to go through Y Combinator. But I don't know how it works nowadays because everything is remote. Today, everything is remote, so there are no more visa issues, which I'm very happy about. That, that's, that's right. So you, ha, have you seen more uh, international founders apply to YC in, in, the last 20, in, in the last 12 months? We absolutely have. So I think when you guys went through YC in 2015, maybe 10% of the batch was international, like if that, and now it's like half. So, and I, I think in the future, it's probably going to be 60 to 70% international. Man, half is a lot. Yeah. That's... Christian, I think that you, yeah, you, you had, you yeah, had, yeah, yeah. you had a question? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Just, I was just saying that that's a lot of people. I'm, I'm super proud. That do is we have amazing. Other, yeah. Do we have I, more questions? I'm, I'm checking that more questions got more uh, hearts. Um, who Alvarez is asking this one? Will y, well, I mean, you already answered this, but let's do it anyway. Will YC be interested in B2B? What kind of scale are you looking for in B2B business and what kind of markets? So actually the, um, the majority of the companies in YC are B2B. And I think YC can be especially helpful for B2B companies because you can sell to the YC companies as your customers. Uh, we have all kinds of tools to help you sign up other YC companies as customers. And for a lot of B2B companies, they find that it's way easier to sign up YC companies as customers than anybody else. Plotsy, did you guys, um, are you the first customers of any of the companies in your batch? <laughs> We we were, were the first customers. What what? Yeah, of course. Uh, we were the first customers of Next Travel. Uh, we, we 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 started working with Next Travel. We were one we of the first customers for Front. The Front, which is now but, a but, huge but, company. But yeah, no. But Front Front was 2014. We met them through YC. They they were already yeah, but growing. They, they, they we were, were very we tiny. Were when we, when we, we were in. we were definitely the first one speaking Spanish and and just complaining like it's like we need <laughs> we, you you need to fix this this language thing and everything. Um, we did the same <laughs> for culture culture rocks. From Francisco Melo, we were one of the first companies using them. Um, we also use, let's see, from well, Travel.ai, of course. Uh, we're we're very proud customers of Travel. I, I I feel like I'm obligated to be a customer of Travel. 
Uh, there are, yeah, there are many like that. It's not easy though. How, I mean, you guys at YC have optimized B2B for the US, but what about Latin America? What, how, do you, how do you see the Latin American ecosystem that is now arising and thriving inside YC, especially for B2B? So I think it's really cool because when, when, when you guys went through YC, there was no Latin America ecosystem for, for YC because you started it. But now there's all kinds of community stuff specifically for the YC Latam companies, right? Uh, are you, I, I hear there's a WhatsApp group. Are, are you guys the founders of the YC Latam WhatsApp yes. group that it's, I hear so much about? Uh, it's like the Fight Club. You don't talk about the group. <laughs> but yeah, there's a... Oh, no. There's a there, no, 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 no. Secret? It's fine. Christian, Christian is the founder, actually. He, 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 he was the original... Uh, let's, let's talk about that. We have a WhatsApp group of all the Latin American founders inside Y Combinator. It's called YC del Sur, like YC in the South. And how, how, it how also, did that it also, it also includes the Spaniards, Freddie, because they're also South of Europe, remember? So it's just like, and we include the Brazilians and we speak English uh, so we can understand each other. And this is super important for us. In Latin America, we feel like there's the Spanish Latin America and the Portuguese Latin America, and nobody really cares about the English speaking Latin America. But in YC del Sur, everyone's welcome. We all speak English and we really help each other. And I believe that that's been super important to think of the whole region as a whole. Uh, and we were inspired by other founders. It was the guys from Docker, Mathilde from France. Uh, we saw the, the French community and we saw the Israeli community. And I was like, oh, let's build something for Latinos. Uh, and we just got together and it really, it really helped. Uh, help each other. We have some specific problems that are only for the region and we're the best uh, help for, for those problems, I, I believe. Let's talk about the pandemic. Uh, do you think that some startups are at risk during this pandemic or do you feel like this pandemic is a great opportunity? How do you, how, how is YC uh, thinking about the pandemic? This is a great question from Gonzalo Alfaro who wants to know, it's like, how do you guys see pandemic and, and YC and entrepreneurship? Yeah. So, um, the weird thing is that the answer to that is both at the same time. Like there definitely are companies that are struggling as a result of the pandemic. And there's certainly a great many people who are struggling because of, of the pandemic. But at the same time, it is also an amazing opportunity for startups because startups thrive on disruption. The thing that is best for startups is when the world changes in some big way, because when the world changes in some big way, big companies can't adjust as quickly as new companies can. And so in the last batch of Y Combinator, the, the summer 20 batch that just graduated, we had tons of companies that were taking advantage of opportunities that literally didn't exist nine months ago. So we had tons of companies doing, um, online education, things like Plotsy, because online education, of course, has exploded. We had tons of companies doing social video conferencing things, like uh, answering the question, like, how can I have a birthday party over video conference? How can I, how can I do dating over video conference? Um, how can I do a happy hour over video conference? How do I do a live concert over video conference? Uh, we had tons of companies working on remote work. So um, uh, how do I keep my employees connected to each other as well as they would be if, if they were in an office? And uh, we had tons of companies doing uh, delivery of all kinds, all kinds of things that like people used to not want to get delivered. Now they want to get delivered at home. And so there's just tons of opportunities like that, that are just so obvious right now. I have a, do, can you guys hear me? Cool. Yeah. The, there's, there's another question that I found very interesting from Gonzalo Alfaro. He's asking, what have you seen? Because you, ha you guys have seen everything because you have, how many, how many companies have Y Combinator found, uh, funded so far? 2,500 companies approximately. 2,500 companies. That's a lot. That's that. Yeah. That's like you, 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 you did a startup advice through brute force. That's fantastic. Uh, so Gonzalo Alfaro is asking, what is the most common problem that you have seen in 
all the startups that you have funded throughout the years? The number one most common problem is making something that people don't want, which is why the Y Combinator motto, we have a motto, it's four words, make something people want. Those are the four most important words of startup advice. And in fact, they're so important that when you get into Y Combinator, we send you a t-shirt with those four words on the front, make something people want. Do you guys still have your, your make something people want t-shirts? I do, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of old. Uh, and, and, and you have another, another shirt that you don't talk about as much, the, the, the black shirt. That's right. All right. The, this is a secret. I'll, 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 I'll tell the audience, but you guys have to agree to keep it a secret. Um, if you succeed as a startup and your company becomes really successful and it gets acquired or goes public, we send you a black t-shirt And the black t-shirt says, I made something people want. That's super cool. We, we actually took that idea for our Platzi Master program. Platzi Master is the income share agreement of Platzi. We, it's like Y Combinator for people. For three months, we help individuals to achieve their highest level of skill in technology. And we help them get a job. When they arrive, we give them like a very basic uh, windbreaker jacket. Uh, that has just the Platzi Master logo. But if they get hired, we give them like an astronaut, super cool black jacket uh, because they, they managed to succeed. And I, I was just inspired by Y Combinator. So the most common issue is that startups don't make something people want. What will be the second most common issue? Second most common issue is being afraid to launch the product and being afraid to talk to users is um, when founders have been working on something for a long time, they have a lot of anxiety about it. Their, 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 their ego is caught up in it. And rather than just launching it and getting users, they just keep building it because they're worried that it's not ready yet, that people aren't going to like it. Um, and there's a great um, quote about this from Steve Jobs, if you haven't heard. It's called real artists ship. Ship means to um, to uh, to launch your product. To uh, comes from when software was like CD ROMs that were like boxed in in uh, in boxes sold in stores. Like you had to ship the product. You had to ship it out. Um, and like real artists ship. And so. One of the things that we do a lot of Y Combinator is we take founders who are nervous about launching their product and we like push them off the cliff. Oh man, that's that's fantastic. That's that's true. It's um everybody's afraid of launching at first, including us. It's it's impossible not to be afraid. Uh, but but launch is better than perfect. The the truth is that. Whatever you think about what your customers want, it's a lie. The only way to actually understand what your customers want is launching. And sometimes this is hard, depending on your industry. Like, for example, if you are in uh, medicine or biological sciences, like, yeah, take your time. Make sure you go through the FDA approval process and everything. But when you're doing software, sometimes we forget how stupidly magical the software industry is. Think about a restaurant. Uh, a chef needs cycles of three months or six months to test a new menu, to test a small change in one of the items of the menu. And they may lose their money and they don't get immediate feedback from the users. In software, we just make a change and it's instant and we can have immediate telemetry and actual metrics and the truth of the behavior of the user in less than 24 hours. Our industry is one of the few industries where people without anything else but their brains just sit down and imagine a product into its existence. We are a kind of artist. And there is a true art of software engineering, which is video games, but don't go there. You will kill yourself if you go into video games. But my point is software is magical. And sometimes because of our fear, we don't allow ourselves to live that magic. And definitely you should be shipping faster. I know that Christian has a question, but I want to ask mine first because I already have the microphone, uh, which is specifically about Latin America. Do you see any difference on the 
uh, in the founders that come from Latin America versus the U.S. founders? Yeah, absolutely. The Latin American founders, they're hungrier. They're, they're hungry to succeed. They're, they're the people who go to YC and they're like, I'm going to get every bit of value that I can out of this program. Like anyone who can help me, I'm going to use their help. Anyone I can raise money from, I'm going to raise money from them. I'm going to, I'm going to get the most out of this experience. We also may be literally hungry, but that is, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was the easy joke. It was the easy it joke. Was it was here. And you took I, it. And you took it. I'm not, I'm it. not proud of it, but it was there. I, I actually want to thank uh, Jared for the time today and for YC for, 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 for creating these spaces, for, for caring about the region and for, for investing. You guys have been a, a great engine to the ecosystem of entrepreneurship in Latin America. And I really thank you guys for that. And I had a final question and I'm going to have to, to, to leave, unfortunately, but I would like to know, Jared, you as a partner, uh, what's the biggest lesson you have gotten from YC? Because you, you, you've been there for a while. What can you tell us? What's, what's, what's the, the biggest lesson for Jared in, in YC, in the other side, as a partner, someone helping and, and, and building this ecosystem? That's a, good, that's a good question. I think the biggest lesson that I learned as a YC partner is how powerful a community can be. That really beyond anything else, the thing that YC is, is a community. And actually everything else is secondary. The buildings, the events, the content, the partners, all that's actually secondary. The number one thing that YC really is, is it's a community of founders. And that's, that's a really special thing. I, I didn't realize how special it was until I, I really got deep inside of it. So thank you. That's God. beautiful. Freddie, um, in particular. Oh, yes. I was no. just going to say thank you guys for hosting this event. And more importantly, thank you guys for being like the champions of YC in Latin America, for being the folks who started the whole thing, who got the whole thing going we really owe our success in the whole region to you no jared this is this is truly an honor this is Platz's this is mission is to is to change the economies of latin america we want our countries in latin america to stop being economies that are based on natural resources and manufacturing most of our economies are just based on oil coal whatever it's on the ground We want our economies to actually leverage the human talent that we have in our nations. We want our GDP to be defined by technology because it's the only way that we will grow and lift millions out of poverty at scale. So the fact that we count with Y Combinator as one of the superpowers behind us to help us achieve this goal, it's just a privilege. Thank you so much for believing in Platzi. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Tamara. And thanks everyone for, for joining us and for uh, being in this Platzi Live. Please be part of Startup School. Take our startup course in Spanish. Begin there. We want to help you. And let's just make Latin America uh, an example of how a region can, can change through entrepreneurship. I'm super glad about it. Thank you. Hey, muchas gracias por haber visto este video en YouTube, aunque te tengo buenas noticias. Hay cosas todavía más importantes sucediendo dentro de Platzi Live. Sucede todas las semanas, todos los jueves en vivo. Pero no solo eso, Platzi tiene un montón de contenidos, cursos, clases, tutoriales y un montón de información que puede ser súper útil para ti. Ve a platzi.com, diagonal agenda y sigue el próximo streaming en vivo.